On today's episode, we're going to go backwards with reverse delay. All right, everybody, welcome to another Make Loud Monday. Uh, I'm glad to be back from uh, a week of COVID after a week of vacation. It's good to be back in the studio. Um, we're probably still going to have a relatively short episode this week, uh, just because it, it's been a while since I've been down here. I didn't even pick up an instrument for almost 12 days, which is unheard of and, and kind of makes me a little uh, triggered to think about it. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about one specific concept today, and that is uh, recording with reverse delay, uh, something that I don't do a whole lot of and uh, did today, and uh, it, it produced some interesting results that I wanted to share with you. So uh, let's go ahead and get things moving forward or backward. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so what what I started with was I, I came up with this little riff right before I left for vacation and it was a pretty simple little riff here I'll grab my guitar and play it and it was just a, uh, like a C major seventh oops got the delay on let me turn that off so it was a C major seventh A minor and then a D sus two Pretty straightforward um, and a fun little a fun little chord riff but it needed something more to it and uh, so when I came back I was like all right the the other piece that I'll add to this is I'll build an arpeggio backwards from C but using the a minor chord and it was And that sounded nice and I figured let me give it a little bit more dimension and break out my delay pedal and for delay the delay pedal that I use is the Joyo Aquarius and here you can see it uh, and I've got it set up with the uh, noise reduction pedal and I've got it set on reverse I've got the time is pretty slow the feedback right here is about 60%. And then there's this other feature here that says time, which uh, I think kind of in controls how long, how present the, the sounds are, the repeat sounds are. Uh, it's a little hard to explain, but I've got it set pretty high. Um, and the end result, if I turn it on, you can now see kind of the tempo that it's at is that it sounds like this. And so if I play that same little arpeggio sound, you can see how it kind of builds on itself and it's it adds a lot of dimension to it. But the interesting thing really happened when I started doubling the recording. So let's switch over to the Studio One screen. Someday I swear I'll get a second camera and I won't have to do all these awkward transitions. Um, but over on the Studio One screen, you can see that I've got four tracks set up. Tracks one and two are the arpeggio with the delay engaged, and tracks three and four are the chord progression without the delay engaged. And the reason I did that, first of all, I lack the coordination to accurately turn on and off a pedal uh, in time with what I'm playing. But secondly, I also wanted to make sure that I preserve the tails of the delay uh, within the uh, arpeggio sound so that I was still getting... <laughs> as I moved into 
Oops. Without that. So that was that was the piece that I wanted to preserve. And what what happened that was interesting, so when I when I originally was setting up the parameters for the delay pedal, I first tried to use the tap tempo to match the uh, 87 beats per minute, which is what I what tempo I decided to play at. And the net effect was that it kind of overlapped on itself and the playing canceled out the impact of the delay. So I just kind of noodled with it until it fell somewhere that was not in any way a multiplier or a factor of the beats that I was playing, so that it was kind of random. And, you know, the net result was... that it had kind of an unstable texture to it. But now I want to play back what happens when I doubled it. And what's interesting is that I made no effort to syncopate where the delay was happening in, in concert with what I was playing. So on, on one time it, was, it might be playing very much, uh, it might be syncopated with the first downbeat. And on the second one, it was not at all syncopated with that. And so it gets this really, really warbly, crazy, phasey uh, feeling. So here, let me play it for you, and you can hear it for yourself. So I, I think it worked out really well because that, that arpeggiated part now is really, really unstable. And then without the delay effect, the chord progression kind of brings it back down and settles it down and gives it some predictability. And then as we go through, and I'll, I'll just skip ahead a little bit or I'll, I'll, I'll allow it to continue playing, then you'll see that uh, it comes back in and unsettles nicely. And if you really pay attention, you can see that the syncopation is completely different than on the first, uh, the first part. So, uh, and, and that, that second part, that's just a simple E minor. Whoops, I still got the, the delay on. So it's just a simple E minor to a G major, and then eventually goes to a, an A major. And then a nice hard stop to kind of get away from that, that strongly syncopated part and then back in. With the, uh, the unstable uh, mixed doubling of the arpeggiated part. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share that interesting technique. I hope it's something that you can try uh, and get cool effects out of. Using, uh, using delay and then when doubling, 
letting it not match and seeing what happens, what, you know, how it gives you these unstable settings. That's going to be it for today. I'll flip back over to here and I will say thank you very much for uh, paying attention today. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please do hit like, uh, subscribe. Uh, next week is going to be fun. Uh, it's my birthday on Wednesday and I've got some fun new toys that I'm not allowed to touch until Wednesday. So I'm going to show them off next week. So make sure you come back and see, uh, see what Santa, uh, no, who brings you birthday presents? Uh, I guess, uh, you know, the birthday monkey brings me, uh, until then do take care of yourselves and, uh, we'll see you again soon.